In this video, we're going to be building a barrel vault roof over the top of this, which is the main room of our house and also the classroom for the Fertile Roots Foundation Permaculture Centre. As usual, it's going to be built by my neighbours and me and any friends and volunteers who happen to come along. None of us have built a vault before, so we're going to be feeling our way a little bit. And also, I haven't really found anything on Google or YouTube that really fits our situation here. And that situation is that these walls are not strong. They're built of earth and rubble, and a vault exerts it's such a lot of sideways thrust that um, I think if we're not careful, it's going to knock the walls over. So we have to make it as light as possible and as strong as possible. We're going to be using these bricks. I want it to be a brick vault on the inside, but if we were to do it with the bricks like that, which would be strong, it'll be too heavy. So we're going to lay the bricks edge to edge, and they're very thin, just three to four centimetres on average. And we'll need some ferro cement over the top to tie it all together and make it super strong. I estimate it's going to be about 6,000 kilos. It's going to weigh that, um, which is far more than these walls can handle. So we're going to have to put in quite a lot of strengthening. It's going to be a big operation and a big experiment. To strengthen the walls, we first build a reinforced ring beam all the way around the top and lay our rails along the edge. Just in case this is not enough to counter the thrust, we tie the sides together with two times 20 millimeter steel bars welded to the rebar inside the ring beam. The idea is that the form will be raised and lowered on bolts with a spanner and will slide along on steel rails. It's particularly important that the rails are perfect, horizontal and parallel to one another. A bunyip water level is used to get everything horizontal. Well, there it is, and it's settled exactly on the top of this wood. The form itself is built of angle iron and 12mm rebar. It was then covered in 3mm plywood, carried into place and carefully set into the steel runners. So this did have a flat roof on it, um, but it was always temporary and there was always this in my mind that we had to do. So we've, we've built it up to the right shape and this wall matches our form just on the other side of it. And we're pretty much ready to start laying bricks. We laid the bricks directly onto the form and then rendered. The herringbone pattern was the idea of one of our early volunteers, Michel, who is also our consultant stonemason. Well, we finished the first section of bricks and we're just about to finish rendering those and we've yeah we've learned a lot of lessons along the way um, it's been a bit of a trial by fire we use lime over cement wherever possible here but the local lime is of mixed quality and it was soon clear that it wasn't strong enough for this even when mixed with cement and there's actually about a centimetre gap, you can just see the light shining through there. It's the same on, on either side. So that's going to present us some problems when we come to move the form. The first metre had to be taken down and rebuilt with cement and sand only. It's pretty strong, the form's still underneath. And now we're putting a, a, a welded mesh of 10 mil rebar. And over the top of that we'll go expanded metal. Ferro cement is made up of one part cement to three parts sand, and we pressed it into place, forcing it into the armature. It's a bit of trial and error. Uh, it's the first time I've done this really. On this kind of a shape, and it has its issues. We're on the last couple of courses of bricks now on what has been an epic job. This really has, uh, well, I've been forced to eat humble pie on quite a few occasions on this thing. It's taken, uh, it's taken a lot of rethinking during it. Uh, and all, almost all the problems can be sourced back to one error I made at the very beginning, which was to give the form underneath too much support 
with an acro, with an adjustable uh, support. And unwittingly, I changed the shape of the form and it was a downhill slope from then. The whole thing now slopes uh, we, because we kept dropping and we couldn't avoid it. There was less distance over the arch each time, each section we did. So to get the same amount of bricks to fit into that arch required more cutting and more cutting and every meter, every meter even more cutting in order to keep the pattern. The form, which was designed to, to be raised and lowered on, on four, four bolts on either side and then slide smoothly on oiled steel runners, that had to be abandoned after the first meter. And in fact, the ends have now been cut off. It's, it's uh, supported on, on four poles. It's weighted down with buckets filled with rubble. It's gone from high tech to low tech, uh, really low tech. It's just, yeah gave us a lot of trouble um, and here in the middle is the, the bricks are half the size but we've retained the pattern and no one will ever notice but I know how to do an arch now I didn't before and just for the guttering we've built this brick wall on to, at the very edge of the stone wall um, and then over the top of that goes our armature, goes the steel. Uh, actually I've used 8mm there because it's just easier to bend and easier to put into shape uh, and then the expanded lath. And then uh, when that's all set and done, it takes a while, we, uh, we put on the cement. I think it makes a strong roof. <laughs> <laughs> Behold the vault, turning this humble room into a great wall. So we're now doing a layer of insulation on top of the roof and we could have used polystyrene sheets or some modern material but I was told about a technique that uses wood shaving and lime. Lime doesn't stick so well to cement and the lime here is not such great quality anyway. So we're using cement. And what, we, what it gives us is this really kind of interesting, fluffy mix. Putting it on up there, quite thick. It's super light as well, which is, which is good. So it's not adding extra weight to our arch. I mean, I'm glad that there's not too much wind today because uh, it's, it's a bit of a weird stuff to put on. I only get the feeling it would blow away before it dried. I'm also taking this opportunity to level out the roof because we had the problem with the form and it's meant that because the form was dropping each meter section we did, uh, this end of the roof is about six or seven centimeters lower than the other end of the roof. And I wouldn't be too worried about that normally except that we've got the ocean here which means that from many different angles the roof at the moment just doesn't line up with the horizon. We've started off quite thin at the ocean end and as we come back here we're, we're thickening it up and it's going to be six centimetres thick here. Over the top of this we'll be doing our uh, final layer of waterproof cement. So I think it's going to work quite well. To help this stuff bond with the ferro cement we're using a mix of water and PVA wood glue. One part glue to four parts water. Which I hope will just just provide a stronger grip. And there we have it, a barrel vault roof. And it's really the centerpiece of the house. It's completely changed the form of the house and I reckon this is now the world's finest permaculture classroom, without a doubt and it's been great fun to build it. What a challenge. Super fun though, lots of people involved. <laughs>